This is Apple's new journal app. It's available on your iPhone in iOS 17.2, and it lets you write journal entries, but more importantly, will actually suggest things from your music, podcasts played, your photos, locations, and even contacts that you've had conversations with, and attach them to an entry as you write. Now, I've struggled to journal in the past, but I found myself making a lot of journal entries in the journal app. I've used it for several weeks now, and I find it to be really powerful, but I do think the journal app needs three key changes, but we'll get to that in a second. Once you've updated to iOS 17.2, you'll see the journal app now appear on your iPhone. On first launch, it'll tell you what journal is and you can schedule specific journaling reminders. And the second page is really important. I'd recommend turning on journaling suggestions because I'll show you the power of that in a moment. And Apple has said that everything that's backed up to iCloud is end-to-end -end encrypted. So you can be sure that your information is private. Now, when you first open the journal app, yours will be blank here and you'll have the blue plus button at the bottom. When you tap that plus button, you'll see suggestions from your past activity. I'll get into the specifics of that in a moment. Or you can tap new entry. A new journal entry starts as blank. You can set it as today's date, or you can hit the three dots and choose a custom pass date. You can also bookmark this entry if it's important. And you have these options down here, adding your location. You can add a voice memo, take a picture right here in the journal app, add images from your library, or you can see some more suggestions right here within an entry. Now, what I find the most powerful is when you hit that plus button, you'll actually see recommendations from your location, contacts, images, and more. The recommended tab will pull just some highlights it's recommending, and it will show you prompts to get you writing that may not include photos, locations, or videos. But if you go to recent, this is where you see all the different activity from your iPhone. You see here, it can actually pull music that you've played on your iPhone, locations and photos you've taken, and it will intelligently group those things like locations and photos you took at that location, even contacts that you've had conversations with, podcasts you've listened to, and it can also pull workouts, photos, videos, and more. Once you find a suggestion you'd like to write about, you could just hit the compose button. I would allow access to your music and podcasts, and then you can just write about this experience, whether it was something you listened to or a conversation you had. And then those suggestions will be attached to the entry. For instance, here, my wife and I went on a little day date to a coffee shop. You'll see this entry, I just have a little two sentence description. I can hit the three dots and bookmark this entry. I can go into further edit it and I can see the location we were at, which is nice, and a photo I took while we were there. Now back at WWDC, when Apple announced the journal app, they said there'll be an API for suggestions. So third party apps like Spotify and Pocket Cast can also have the media you play in those apps suggested in the journal app. But those apps do need to be updated with that API to support the journal app so you see those suggestions there. You'll also notice when you create a new entry based on a suggestion, it has today's date on top. But if you hit the three dots, you can actually change it to the moment date or the date that you actually listen to this music. I typically like defaulting to the moment date, then it documents when I listen to this music or when I took this photo. Now there are a few settings for the journal app. If you jump into settings, then scroll down to journal, I have all this toggled on so we can access the microphone, camera, and so forth. You can also choose to skip the journaling suggestions when you create a new entry. If you toggle this on, then when you tap the plus button in the journal app, it'll skip that whole suggestions or recommendations. It'll just go to a blank entry. I actually like seeing those suggestions first. Again, you can lock the journal with your face ID and iPhone passcode, but unfortunately you can't set a different passcode for the journal app than your passcode is for your iPhone. It uses the same one. This is also the case for things like iCloud passwords, and I've heard from people in the comments on social media that they would love to set a different passcode for these specific apps. This way, if someone has their phone passcode, they won't necessarily have these app passcodes. I think that'd be a good idea. It'd be great if you could set a different passcode. You can also choose to set a journaling schedule. This will give you a prompt to actually start writing on specific dates and times that you set. You won't get that notification if you've already created an entry that day. And you can choose to save photos you take in the journal app to your photo library or not. This might be helpful if you wanna take a photo that's kind of private, specifically about something you're journaling about and you don't want it to go to your photo library, you can keep that toggled off. If you have that journaling schedule on, you'll get notifications like this prompting you to write on those specific days. Before I get into my personal experience with the journal app, there is no iPad or Mac app right now. Hopefully those come soon. And also the journal app doesn't have access to the data on those other devices, even if they're signed into your iCloud account. So if you listen to music or podcasts on your iPad or your Mac, you won't see those suggestions in the journal app on your iPhone. This is unfortunate, especially if you work on a Mac all day and that's where you listen to your podcasts, you won't see those on the iPhone. All the suggestions you're gonna get is strictly locked to this iPhone. Now, all that being said, I've loved the journal app. I've wanted to journal for a long time. I've struggled to actually sit down and write a bunch whenever I've wanted to journal. And I love that these prompts get me writing and I don't feel like I have to write a whole lot. Having context like this, whether it was a location we went to or pictures taken on a date and time, 
I don't feel like I have to write a bunch to explain what we were doing. In the future, this should trigger my memory enough to know what's going on, and I feel like I can just write one or two sentences, and I've actually journaled something for the day, and I feel good about that. I even recently had a conversation with fellow YouTube creator and shortcuts expert, Matthew Casanelli, and I did a little sentence about that. The contact suggestion was here in the journal app because we had a FaceTime call, and I love being able to create that quickly. Even if it's a podcast that I listen to, something I want to remember, I'll write a little bit about that specific podcast episode. There's also swipe actions here in the journal app. You can swipe over, save an entry, or swipe the other way and edit or delete. And you can even have videos as a part of an entry. You can have very long videos. I think it's about two minutes in length, but it's nice to have just those little video clips attached to the photos and location. You can also filter your entry view by clicking this icon in the top right. And you can just go to bookmark, just photos, videos, just music and podcasts if you'd like and it will just show you those entries. Now, three things I really hope Apple adds to make the journal app pretty much perfect. One is actually linking to the media that you've added to an entry. For instance, I talked about this episode of Decoder. I can go to that entry, I can see the episode, the title, but there's no way to go to this episode, say in Apple Podcasts. I know it pulled the episode from me listening to it in the Apple Podcasts app, but there's no way to jump to this episode and listen to it again. Technically, I could have copy and pasted the link to this episode in the entry that I wrote, but it's right here. I would love to just be able to tap it and just go to that location. Same thing with a maps location. Here I can see we went to a skate park, but I can't actually open this in maps. I can edit it. I can change the title or the specific location for this entry, but there's no way to jump to the Apple Maps app with this location highlighted. There's also no way to jump to this photo in your photo library. Even a live photo can be viewed here. And like I said, videos are here as well, but I wish I could jump to my photo library to see more of the media that I took on this specific day and time. Now, when it comes to music tracks, I can actually just hit the play button on the music and it starts playing. But the same is not true for podcasts. Linking to the media would be huge and also a search function in the journal app would be great. Filtering by content type is good, but if I want to find a specific entry, which I imagine I'll have hundreds after a couple years, there's no way to search the journal app. There's no spotlight here at the top. And if I search for like the title of an entry, let's say afternoon date, there's no search results for the journal app here in spotlight either. So as you build your journal database, I hope they add a search function. And finally, when you create a new entry, let's say it's a blank entry, you can choose a past date. So I can even go back several years. Maybe I want to write about Christmas last year. Well, I can start writing and it will backdate this entry. But if I look at these suggestions for this date, it doesn't pull anything from that specific day and time. It only shows me the recent suggestions or the recommended moments that it showed me on the main page of the journal app. It knows what photos I took that day because all that data is in my photo library. And for some reason, Journal has private access to my photo library, but I can't give it full access. Maybe that's what it needs, but it doesn't give me any suggestions, music, photos, or anything from that specific date. Now it will show me stuff from the past, like podcasts I listened to on Friday, but if I create a new entry on that date, it's not gonna automatically populate this information. Now, before someone says, well, it's because you only install the journal app after a certain date. On this specific iPhone, I only updated to 17.2 with the journal app on Saturday. And yet, even before I updated with the journal app, it's pulling suggestions from last week, prior to me having the journal app on my phone. So it seems like the journal app can go back in time and see data for specific dates, but it can only go back so far and it's not recommending those things automatically. Now, why would you want this? Well, my reason might be a little sad, just so you know. But the main phone I've been testing the journal app on is my dad's iPhone. And my dad passed away a little over a year ago. And so inside his journal app, I did some testing. This was when I got my M3 MacBook Pro. I would love to be able to create an entry on a past date and see some of the things he did that day. Maybe the music he listened to or the podcast he listened to. I still get some recommendations. And here are some photos from his photo library that I can create a post and it has the date and the time. But if I create a new entry where I know he has photos, like this was his birthday, we were all together as a family on this date, hitting the photo suggestion in the journal app, doesn't show anything from that specific date. These are just recent photos. And the suggestions tab just shows me those same highlights from the main page, and even recent, it doesn't show me things from the specific date that I've chosen here. And I know the journal app can do it because it'll pull music and podcast recommendations from a week before I install the journal app on my iPhone, so hopefully Apple can add that functionality, pull some of that historic data, even if it's just photos and videos, I think that would be a huge help when creating a new entry, but from the past. But overall, I really love the journal app. Just being able to write a sentence or two with those suggestions already there, like photos, videos, and locations is great. Or if you go on a big family trip or vacation, just being able to write a couple sentences each day, including photos you've taken as you've been traveling around, I think it's gonna be a great feature. 
So I recommend you try it. It's totally free. It's going to be a part of the iOS 17.2 update. It might be available right now as you watch this. And just look for the journal app on your iPhone after you update. If you have any questions about the journal app, drop a comment below this video, hit that like button before you go, and subscribe to the channel. Got some fun videos coming up before the end of the year, especially a full smart home tour. I've been reviewing all the smart locks. I have one more review coming, and then I can compare all the home key enabled smart locks at once. If you want to check out some of my smart home videos, check out this playlist above. Or if you want to dive into some of the features in iOS 17, just to make sure you didn't miss anything, I have the top 17 hidden features in iOS 17. That video's right up here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.